I'm very excited to talk to you about the virtual recess room today. This is my education project that I've been doing in the last year during the pandemic, um, and it's a open access simulation project. I'm presenting today on behalf of my McMaster team, which is an amazing group of clinicians and educators who really changed the virtual recess room from essentially just my idea to an educational tool that's been used pretty widely. So thank you to them. Um, and I have no conflicts of interest or disclosures. This is entirely a for fun open access project. So we all remember the spring of 2020 when we had to do the struggle of suddenly converting in-person education to online education. And this was particularly difficult for SIM. So a few kind of options emerged amongst educators. Um, the most commonly used was a facilitator guided screen share. Now that's not what educators called it, they just called it SIM, but really that's what it was. So the facilitators would show their monitor or videos um, or pictures of a SIM mannequin and they would share their screen and they talk through the case like an oral exam. Some people did small group SIM with everyone else observing remotely. Others did marionette style SIM where the text of the facilitators did the actions on the SIM mannequin when everyone else participated from home. But I felt there was something missing in all these approaches. Although they all were excellent for knowledge review and application, they missed two things that I thought were essential. The first was that we like STEM because it's hands-on. That's what makes it fun. And all of those options were all just about talking. And the other, which is probably more important, is that without actions to do, it means you don't really need team roles. And without team roles, you can't rehearse your crisis resource management skills, which is really the reason that STEM is valuable. So I wanted to kind of close this gap and the solution I created was the virtual recess room. Now the concept is very simple because the VRR just uses programs we already have that most of us are familiar with and that most importantly are free. So it uses Zoom or Google Meets or Teams, anything that we can use like a teleconferencing software so we can see each other and talk to each other, just like we're doing now, which is obviously useful for the learners so they can see each other. The more novel part of the VRR is the creative use of a Google slide. So many of us use Google slide, Google Docs already. And essentially the concept is multiple people up to hundred can be simultaneously editing, making changes, click and dragging, typing in text boxes, which means that learners and facilitators alike could be interacting with the same set of slides independently. I'm gonna show you what that looks like with a video. Um, to, it'll make a little bit more sense like that. Learners click and drag the monitors into place of the patient. All facilitators type in the vital signs on the monitor. Is awesome. swelling around his mouth and a rash on his cheeks. This is what I hear. Apply oxygen to the patient. Grab extra airway that you might need from slide three. Copy. And then paste into place on slide one at the head of the bed. Grab medications from the med tray. Copy and paste into place. You can defibrillate the patient. Findings on ultrasound through the steps of a procedure. So essentially the concept of the virtual recess room is very simple. Um, we just use a Google slide to work through the actions of the SIM. Now, after we did the first pilot with my small group of residents at U of T, they all really liked it. They thought it was fun, but I wanted to make sure it was more than just the cool factor that essentially made them like it. And it was for that reason that with the team from McMaster, we decided to do a formal program eval. And this was done at McMaster between June and August of 2020 for the emergency medicine clerks. We involved the 67 medical students who happened to be doing their eMERGE rotation during that period of time and 16 eMERGE and other specialist um, facilitators. We did an SVT and a VT case because those complemented the core eMERGE clerkship curriculum. And we did the program eval with a pre and a post survey with a pretty good response rate of about 69% for both facilitators and students. For those of you who are interested in curriculum design and program eval, I've put in the questions and the statistics on the clipboard. For everyone else, the takeaway point is that the virtual recess room worked. So it had very high scores for usability, applicability, even fidelity scores were um, kind of reasonably uh, well received. They had, we showed that the learners gained knowledge and that the facilitators spent less time. What made me most excited, though, was really the open-ended questions. And what the learners and facilitators alike showed is that what they liked about the VR was that it was hands-on and interactive. So multiple people independently used the word hands-on. And secondly, when we asked the learners what they learned, they talked, of course, about SVT, VT, cardiac arrest, but many of them also talked about the importance of speaking up and role delegation and maintaining situational awareness. So even though it's a very simple concept of the Google slide, we showed through the program eval that it really did close that gap and make it more hands-on and make it possible to meaningfully rehearse CRM. 
since the program eval was done last summer, the virtual recess room has really taken off. Um, now I've posted all the cases completely open access, so I have no formal way to track who's used it. But from educators who formally reached out to me with emails or messages on social media, I know that it's been used by more than 25 programs in more than 10 countries from all levels of learners, doctors, nurses, paramedics, interprofessional teams, and in a variety of con contexts from courses and conferences, clerkship curriculums for some sim olympics and contests and then for interest group events and as i mentioned there's many cases that have been published quite a few i've developed but others have been developed by educators and medical students around the world and it's just entirely posted to be shared and used by all and it's been translated into a few different languages um, now obviously thank goodness we're moving to more in-person learning which is amazing but i still think there'll be a role for the virtual recess room moving forward the first is just for fun like to add sim to the curriculum that already have sim and already some of my local family medicine residents are just doing this every few weeks they meet up to kind of practice sim and get a little bit more acuity training which is what they call it it also can be used to offer sims when in person just isn't feasible too expensive not enough teachers not enough space and then finally the thing i feel really excited about is that this really bridges the gap between people who work tertiary and remote and between people in different countries. So even when in-person is possible, the VRR is a free and easy way to have educators and facilitators from different parts of the world work together at the same time. So in summary, the virtual recess room uses Google Slides and Zoom to provide an interactive and fun sim experience. And I think what I'm most proud of about the VRR aside from the program eval of the use is just that in the last year and a half when everyone's been so burnt out and exhausted and emergency medicine and medicine in general has been so difficult, the VRR has created little pockets of time where educators and learners can just share their love and joy of learning and have fun in a very safe space in the comfort of their home and pajamas often. Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts, questions, feedback. I've put my um, Twitter handle and the website there if anyone wants to check it out. There's lots more demo videos and info on the website. Thank you. Thank you.